Okay, welcome back. So far, we've seen how to interact with MongoDB using the Mongo console, which as I mentioned, is nice for teaching things and for testing things out and debugging, but it's not where we'll actually write the bulk of our code that interacts with the database. Where we'll actually be doing that is inside of our express code. So let me pull up an example. Uh, let's go to Yelp Camp and just take a look at our app.js. Here's an example of where we would use Mongo. So for instance, here, when we're adding a new campground to our array, rather than adding campgrounds to an array, we would have a database, a Mongo database and a collection called campgrounds. And this is actually coming up very soon in this series. And then when you submit a post request to slash campgrounds, rather than pushing into an array, we're going to insert into the MongoDB collection. Likewise up here on the get slash campgrounds, rather than just rendering campgrounds with the array campgrounds that's defined here, we're actually going to do a find, a db.campgrounds.find, and then take the results of that and send that to the campgrounds template. Okay, so we'll get there. So that's what we're focusing on this lesson. And in order to do that, we're going to learn about a tool called Mongoose. So I have three main goals. I wanna tell you what Mongoose is. I wanna explain why we're using it. And I also wanna show you how to use it instead of a JavaScript file. Let's start by talking about what Mongoose is. So I have the official homepage open. It says that Mongoose is an elegant MongoDB object modeling for Node.js. Okay, let's read a little bit more. Mongoose provides a straightforward schema-based solution to model your application data. It includes built-in typecasting, validation, query building, business logic hooks, and more out of the box. So I think this would make more sense to a seasoned developer, but what it really means is that Mongoose is a tool, it's a package that we're going to download with NPM, that helps us interact with MongoDB inside of our JavaScript files. It is possible to do it without Mongoose. There are other tools like this out there, but it just makes it easier for us to interact with the database. Just like jQuery makes it easier for us to interact with the DOM, but we don't have to have jQuery, Mongoose makes it easier and cleaner for us to interact with a MongoDB database, but it's not necessary. So let's head back to Cloud9, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a single JavaScript file. It's not going to be an Express app, it's just going to be a single file that I run with node, node app.js. And when I run the file, we want it to add something to our database using Mongoose. So I'll get started. I'm inside of a directory that I made called databases. I'm going to make a file and let's just call it cats.js. I've been doing too much dog stuff. I know I'm gonna get complaints, gotta do some cats. So we'll do cats.js and then inside of that, let's open it up. And before we do anything else, I'm going to install Mongoose, which is a package. There we go. And let's make some room here. And the next thing that we wanna do is require Mongoose. So we'll do var mongoose equals require mongoose. And what we're gonna do first is focus on adding a new cat to the database. And then later, we're going to retrieve all cats from the database. And we'll do a simple console.log each one. Just like that. Okay, so we're gonna start by figuring out how we add a new cat to the database. And before we can even do that, there's a little bit more setup we need to do with Mongoose, which is we need to connect to a database. So remember how we have this running in the background. This is our Mongo daemon. We need to keep that running. So if you turned it off for some reason, make sure you turn it back on with that command, mongod. And then we're going to tell Mongoose to connect to this server that we have running. And that looks like this, mongoose.connect, and then a URL that needs to look like this, mongodb colon slash slash localhost slash, and then whatever we want to come next. This is the name of our database. And just like before, if we don't have the database created, let's say I call it cat app. I don't have a cat app database yet. And if I run this, it will connect and try and find cat app. It won't find it and it will make cat app for me. But if there is one and it does find it, it will use the pre-existing cat app. So we'll just go with cat app. That's fine by me. And that will now connect to our database. And we can test that out by just running our file. 
node cats.js. We don't get an error, which means that everything works fine. So we can control C out of that. And now what we want to do is focus on adding a cat to the database. And before we can do that, we actually need to define what a cat looks like. So I'm going to do that here. And you're going to see some new syntax quite a bit, a bunch of new methods that come with Mongoose that you've never seen before. And I promise I'll explain them all, but I'm going to start by just typing it out. So we define our cat schema equals new mongoose dot schema with a capital S, which we pass an object into. And then inside the object, we're going to say that a cat has a name. That's a string. An age, that's a number. And we can do breed, although I'm realizing that I actually don't know many cat breeds. So I'm going to change this to temperament, which is a really tricky word to spell. I always forget about this A. I think I got it right. So we'll do temperament, and that will be a string as well. OK, and we'll save. And this doesn't actually do anything to our database. It just tells Mongoose, our JavaScript. It tells the JavaScript side of things that I want to be able to add cats to our database. And a cat should be defined as this. You might be asking yourself, isn't this no SQL or non-relational? Doesn't that mean that I don't have to define a table? Yes, that's right. This is not defining a table. This is defining a pattern for our data. But it doesn't mean that we're forbidden from adding new stuff or leaving certain things off. It's just a nice way of providing structure because we do need some sort of predictable structure in order to write code that can handle these cats. Let's say that we want a template to print out name, age, and temperament. We need to make sure that every cat has name, age, and temperament. And if it doesn't, then we need to be able to anticipate that. So that's how we define the schema. But we still have one more thing to do. And in my experience, this next line is a little bit confusing. So I'm going to type it first. Cat with a capital C equals mongoose.model. And then cat, again, in quotes this time. And then the schema. And we're going to save. So what we did here is we took the schema, cat schema, which is just a pattern that says every cat has a name, age, and temperament. And we compiled it into a model. And we save it to a variable cat. And now we can use that cat variable with a capital C to make new cats, to find cats, to remove cats, to update cats. We'll do everything off of cat. So we'll have things like cat.find or cat.remove or cat.create. So we've created this cat object, which is really a pattern for our cats that now has a bunch of different pieces on it as well. So this is just the peer pattern that says a cat has a name, age, and temperament. And when we save it to a variable after compiling it into a model, it's not just this pattern now, but it actually has all of the methods on it that we want. So it takes that pattern and it builds this complex model that has all of the methods we need to use. And it, it is always a little bit confusing. In particular, this right here. This always is supposed to be the singular version of your collection name. So if we give it cat, which is what we did here, it's going to make a collection called cats. And it is pretty smart as far as how it pluralizes things. There's a nice little library that does it. It can pluralize something like person into people without problems at all. So again, this is the name of our singular version of our model which is cat, and it will automatically take that and make a new collection in our database that would look like db.cats. OK, so now we have everything we need to do in order to add a cat in. Now we just need to write the code. 